This week, I am taking a graduation hat in honor of all the graduates of 2020. So I've graduated from How to Cake It. You can see my diploma signed by me. And the truth is, I feel like at this point, we're all kind of ready to graduate from 2020 on a whole. So I'm thinking I'll just wear this and maybe it will help get us there. To make this cake, I made four pounds of my ultimate vanilla batter and I decided to dye it a really vibrant yellow. And using my new Joe Spatch, I didn't waste any of that batter. This was my graduation gift to myself, actually. If you guys wanna try this out, it's my new favorite baking tool. There's a link in the description below. It gets all the batter off your paddle. My cakes are baked, cooled, and chilled. I'm going to remove them from their pans, level them, cut the caramelization away from the bottom, and then I'm gonna layer each cake into two. Now I'm going to stack all four of my layers on top of one another and begin to carve the very simple shape that is the base of a graduation hat. Round off the top edge slightly and then just trim the sides all the way around to remove all the caramelization. Now I'm going to unstack my layers and call on my best friend from How to Cake at School, Sir Squeeze, to help me simple syrup these cakes. And I'm not just simple syruping this cake with regular simple syrup. I'm using lemon simple syrup. Sir Squeeze actually excelled at simple syrup. Unfortunately, he failed everything else. It's, it's a good thing I couldn't even find a mini grad hat, so it's fine. I have another year to look. Now time to fill and stack this cake, and I've decided to fill it with cream cheese frosting and lemon curd. So as I fill in stack, the first thing I do is pipe a fence of Italian meringue buttercream. Then I put on a nice dollop of my cream cheese frosting, spread it all the way across to the fence, and then a dollop of lemon curd, spread that on top, add another layer of cake, and repeat to the top. Reason why I chose to pipe a fence of buttercream is because anytime I'm using a filling that's on the softer side, that fence really helps keep that filling in. Cake is naturally heavy. When you add fondant to it, it's even heavier. And sometimes once you're done, all your filling wants to push out the side. So using Italian meringue buttercream or something like ganache as a fence really, really helps. I, want, I was going for like a lemon cheesecake-y type flavor. Mm, nice. Because I wanted the flavor inside to represent how bittersweet graduation is. Graduation under any circumstance is normally bittersweet, but I think for the graduates of 2020, it's extra bittersweet because you can't have your commencement ceremonies and your celebrations and your proms and all that good stuff. Um, you've all worked so hard and you really wanna to celebrate together, you know? So I can't even imagine uh, going through that and that's why I wanted to make this cake for all of you. My cake is filled and stacked. It's time to crumb coat and chill the cap base with Italian meringue buttercream. My crown coat is chilled, so I'm going to ice this cake one more time. I'm using a bench scraper to help me get my sides. <gasps> I just broke off the 2020. <laughs> I need a moment. Oh, I just unhooked it. It can't just be a any year graduate. No. Goodness. It actually says in it, front of cap. <laughs> Good, glad I did it right. They obviously don't have much faith in graduates. No. <laughs> now time to cover this cake with blue fondant. Oh, I gave away the color. I decided to make a blue grand hat. I don't know why I always associate, I know why I associate blue with graduation because it was the color of both my high school graduation and my college graduation. So I'm just like, it's blue. That's the color. You just wanna make sure that you trim away all of the excess fondant right at the base of the cake. And it's time to make this part of the cap, which is more than a brim. I feel like this is not a brim. For this part of the hat, 
I've cut a 10 inch square cake board and I'm gonna cover that board with the same blue fondant that I covered my cake with. Brim. Yeah, it's more than a brim. I'm gonna make this. But there's no other hat like it. It's just like a, a how a grad hat is. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't feel like we could pull this off in daily life. So first I'm gonna cover the bottom side. I'm lightly brushing the entire surface with clear, I was gonna say clear blue gel. I'm... <laughs> Don't you love the color clear blue? Yes, clear blue. <laughs> and I'm gonna roll out my blue fondant, nice and thin, as thin as I can get it, lay it on top and smooth it with my fondant smoother. I'm smoothing it right down the sides. I'm gonna trim away the excess. And before I'm done, I just want to mark um, an X from corner to corner, because this hat looks like, it's fabric, so it's like wrapped underneath, like kind of like an envelope. So I wanna create that effect. Now I can flip this board over. I'm gonna flip it onto a piece of parchment because the fondant isn't dry and I don't want it to stick to the cake board. And then I'm going to drape this fondant over. You're not really draping, you're kind of like laying it over, smoothing it. I'm also gonna smooth it down the sides once again. And this is really easy, but the tricky part is if there was a flaw in the fondant anywhere, it would be extremely noticeable because it's so plain. Is my tassel at the back? I have a question, is the tassel, oh yeah, because on my cake I put the tassel this way. Does it mean something? Probably, let's ask the other Oh no, graduates, please tell me. Does the tassel side matter? Now I want to make a small blue button for the top, this thing here. Because if you don't have that button, you don't have the tassel. And if you don't have a tassel, I mean, what is this hat, really? <laughs> what is it? So you need the button to hold on the tassel. I'm laughing so hard because it looks so funny. I'm actually very happy I didn't have to wear one of those. <laughs> it would have looked ridiculous. You're pulling it off, yo, you're pulling it no, off. No, I don't think I am. But I'll wear it for you guys. Now, what I wanna do is glue this board to my cake. I'm gonna spread a little bit of royal icing onto the top of my cake and then glue my board on top. I like to get down underneath and make sure that it's centered because it's bigger than the cake. It's hard to tell when you're looking down at it. So I just get underneath and just see if the distance on all four sides is the same. I wanna give my cake some time to dry and make sure that the brim is glued to the hat. So in the meantime, I'm going to make a diploma not this diploma. I'm going to make a fondant diploma. Now, if your fondant's a bit soft, you can mix it with gum paste to make 50-50, which is exactly what it is, 50% gum paste and 50% fondant. And then I rolled it out and I cut it uh, to the size of a diploma, which I Googled. They come in various sizes. Like <laughs> Yeah, they come in different sizes. I settled on 11 by 14 inches because that seemed to be the most common answer. The how did cake it diplomas are much smaller because we really wanted them to stand out. It looks suspiciously like just printer paper. Am I wrong? <laughs> and then I'm carefully going to roll it up. At first I started to roll it up and I realized um, it might sort of collapse in the center. So I ended up laying a thick dowel in the middle and rolling my fondant up onto itself. Now I'm gonna roll out some red fondant and I'm using a bow cutter and a strip cutter to cut out both the bow and then a couple of strips to wrap around the diploma. So once I've formed my bow, I just take a little bit of clear piping gel and glue that those strips around the diploma and the bow on top. It's ready for graduation. It doesn't say anything. You haven't graduated from anything, but it looks professional. It's time to move on to making the tassel, which is the real star of this show. Of course, I'm sure you already know, I'm gonna use my clay extruder. I mean, look at this, look at all these strands. I clay extruded yellow fondant and I used the face plate that I used to make grass or hair. It's just the plate that has a lot of thin holes in it. So once I extruded a bunch of fondant, I always try to extrude more than I think I need, I then, laid all of the strands on top of each other, gathered them all up, and cut them all to the same length. 
just use the footage of me making the cake. That will, that will get, that will, yes, that will penetrate. Now I'm gonna change the faceplate on my clay extruder and extrude some thicker cords. I'm gonna take two of these cords and just twist them together. And what I need to do is, again, please use footage. I need to fold that fo those folded tassels over this twist. Because I'm making this part the part that attaches it to the hat. Get what I mean? Did that. Now I need to make some more twists uh, to make the part that goes around the button over here. And I'm also cutting some smaller twists to make it look as if the, um, uh, this is not the tassel, the cord, the rope is knotted because it's knotted at two parts. Now here's the scary part. I have to get this tassel on the cake. I'm gonna very carefully decide where I want my tassel to land on the hat, and I'm gonna glue it in place with a little bit of clear piping gel. And I'm also adding the rest of the cord that leads up to the button, and I'll secure my button over the top loop with a little bit of royal icing. This is just a regular tassel. It needs to be 20-20. I'm using some yellow gum paste rolled nice and thin, and then I'm gonna use some number cutters that I have and cut out 2020. Overlap the letters, gluing 2020, two, not letters, numbers, 2020. Two, <laughs> Yolanda, are you sure you deserve that certificate? I told you, I graduated from chef school. Okay, once my 2020s are dry, I'm going to paint them with gold luster paint. So I just wanna paint the whole surface front and back and let that dry. Now I need to create this part, this little, I don't know, claspy thing <laughs> that holds the tassel together. It's like a bracelet. It's like a clasp, it's like a tassel bracelet. So I'm rolling out some yellow gum paste. I'm gonna use a small strip cutter to um, just create those lines. So I don't wanna cut right through, I just wanna press it on. Then I'm going to paint it gold, the same gold as the 2020. And this part I procrastinated because now I have to wrap this gold piece around the tassel that's already glued to my hat. This is like my final exam because the worst part about this is gold luster gets everywhere. So if I miss or I'm not really careful, I might get gold onto my blue fondant and that will be very hard to remove. So take your time and be very careful. So I heard that the Obamas and Lady Gaga are doing like a whole, all these speeches and like a commencement ceremony for all the graduates of 2020. So of course, I wanted to um, make you all a virtual cake and be part of that ceremony, even though I wasn't formally invited. You need cake for a celebration. Everyone knows that. I just wanna say hats off to anyone who has used this you know, quarantine opportunity to learn something new. An online course or studying, we're doing all these baking happy classes that people are joining and learning how to bake and decorate. If you wanna sign up for a bake you happy class, check the link below. Class of 2020, congratulations! Oh my God. I dropped a ruler, everything's okay? It was a ruler. Do I have a mark on my head? Do I have grad hat head? Do I have grad hat head? I do? Oh no, I'm gonna put it back on. It's not a way to go.